What's up guys, eDrone here. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Sub 250 Nanofly 16. Stay tuned. Okay, here's the Nanofly 16, uh, the way I received it. I ordered this one with the two batteries from Sub 250, 380 milliamp. They also come with the GMB 27 connectors. Really nice. All right, let's take a look at the packaging here from Sub 250. You can see you have a nice plastic case with specifications on the back. I got the Crossfire version. They also have a Express LRS version as well. Go ahead and open this up. I do like that they give you a nice little plastic case to have everything. You can definitely use that uh, for other things, for sure. Comes with some uh, two sets of propellers, a little battery uh, mount for the bottom, Propeller guide with screwdriver, Sub-250 card, and some stickers from Sub-250. Okay, here's everything you get in the box. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the quadcopter here. You can see we have an all-in-one board. And the TBS Crossfire slides right in the top of the canopy. And a little more small mortal T on the bottom. Okay, to put the props on, you're just going to push them down on there securely. And here's a comparison for size, my Beta 65X. You see it's roughly about the same footprint, maybe just a little bit smaller. Okay, we got 31 grams for the quadcopter, 41 with the battery and the mount. And for reference, here's my Beta 65. Nice looking design, I really do like the colors. Okay, to put the little mount on, you're going to need to get like a pair of tweezers or something and kind of open that little fold up and then tuck that inside and then it'll latch into place. And you can see it does lay flat even with the mount on the bottom. This is the charging board I got separately from Amazon. And I'll put links down in the description for everything in the video. And the battery is a really tight fit. So you could probably get some smaller, skinnier style batteries in here. But definitely not anything larger. It's a really, really tight fit. But you don't have to worry about it ejecting. Alright, so let's go ahead and get ready to bind up to the uh, Nano 16 with my TBS Tango 2 Pro. And as you can see, the light on mine from the factory is a solid red, which is not what we want. We want the light to be flashing red, indicating that the receiver's in binding mode. It will not bind this way. So all you have to do is simply just slide the receiver out a little bit and push in on the bind button one time, and you should get a red flashing light just like you see here. So you may yours may come ready to be bound, or it may come solid like mine. But once you have a flashing red light, you push bind on the controller. And it's going to tell you to update the Nano. Go ahead and push in on the jog wheel. And go ahead and wait for the receiver to update. This is going to take a, could take a couple minutes. You, don't, you want to make sure you definitely don't power off the quadcopter or the Tango 2 while you're in binding. Go ahead and speed this up so we can get to the binding completion here. And like I said, just keep... The, a little bit of distance between them and as you can see we have a green light on the transmitter it says binding okay so we'll go ahead and push exit to get out of that screen and then you can see here on the quadcopter we also have a green light on the tbs nano receiver indicating that we are properly bound so let's go ahead and double check okay so let's go ahead and unplug the nano fly you can see that the light went to a orangish light on the uh, transmitter and if we go ahead and plug power back into the Nanofly, we should get a green light on the transmitter and also a green light on the Crossfire Nano receiver, indicating that we are properly bound. Okay, so now we have our quadcopter bound to the controller. Now we need to go ahead and plug in our micro USB and go ahead and come into Betaflight. Okay, once you're in Betaflight, go ahead and connect to the correct COM port. Make sure your quadcopter is has the correct orientation moving on the screen exactly like the way you move it on your hand go ahead and set up your switches um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to a video showing you in depth how to set these up and then once you have your switches go ahead and go to the receiver tab make sure that the proper sticks are moving the proper uh, auxiliary channels here and then make sure you have your correct uh, serial receiver for crossfire setup and the correct UART. And then if, if, if it's not moving the right way, go ahead and change that channel mapping. All right guys, so we're out here. Uh, we're gonna do the outdoor test with the Nanofly. 
Got a little bit of wind out here, as you can see from the treetops. So this could be a good little test to see how this little guy does out in the wind on 1S. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of freestyle ripping. All right, here's the outdoor flight. Um, I ended up doing it right at my house because I somehow lost a DVR from our meetup. But um, real quick, wanted to let you guys know that I am sponsored by audio.com. And I'm going to go ahead and put links down in the description for a coupon code. So if you're interested in getting some nice copy uh, right free music to use on your channel, you can get 70% off with this discount code. I'll pop it up on the screen and I'll put links down in the description as well. Uh, but that's the music we're using in this flight here is, uh, is from audio.com. All right, back to the flight. Um, really like this outside. I had a little bit of wind uh, this day, probably about a four or five mile an hour winds. And it didn't seem to affect the NanoFly much at all. I was able to do acro flying, you know, do some nice split S's, a couple little power loops. And as long as you, you know, you're on the throttle pretty good, it's so fun to just freestyle this outside. And it, it does feel like a bigger quadcopter, more probably like a, maybe like closer to like a three inch. It's a lot of fun. Um, it has way more authority than I thought it would have, honestly, because I've flown like, you know, uh, tiny whoops and beta FPV you know whoop style drones outside and they just do not perform like this um, especially when you start doing acro maneuvers and stuff like that so it's really fun i do like this class of drone even though it has the bi-blade propellers which you know you're going to have to be on the top end of the throttle for sure when you start flying out here like outside using the freestyle but the good news is it does have the power when you need it um, you will get some battery sag when you really do some big punch outs but I didn't find it to be, you know, unmanageable. And actually right here, I clipped the, the, the leaves and actually was able to recover from that. So that was really impressive for the size of props that this guy's toting. They're really small. Um, and yeah, it just feels really good outside. I love flying it outside. It's very quiet. And, um, you know, it gives you a chance to do a little bit of freestyle. Uh, you can also fly in angle mode if you like, do a little more racing type setup. But I would say um, definitely is not hard to fly it outside at all definitely recommend flying it outside or inside whatever your preference is it's a very versatile drone a lot of fun so let's uh talk about the sub 250 nanofly 16 um and my experiences with it i will tell you overall that i really do enjoy this drone it's a lot of fun i like flying it outside and inside i was actually really impressed with the the the, the wind it was able to tolerate outside flying this little guy around it zips around through the house and it's really fun um the, the build quality i really like the way it's all assembled i like the way it goes together i like the fact that it comes with crossfire as an option as well as express lrs that's a good two options for this drone uh, and I really just like the way it's set up. I like the way the canopy goes on. Um, it could have a little bit more protection around the actual all-in-one board, but to be honest, um, I've crashed this thing a ton inside and outside, and I have yet to receive hardly any damages other than a couple of Nick props. So I'm going to put links down in the video description for everything in this video, um, the quadcopter here, the extra props, some other spare parts, anything um, that I can find that, that is out now currently for this drone. I'll put links down in the description. But let me tell you about some of the things that I didn't like and some of the things I ran into. And I'm not sure exactly if it happened from the factory or if it was just some kind of a bug going around in the software. But this came with Betaflight 4.3.0. And when I went to plug it in to the Betaflight to set all the switches up, Everything appeared to be working fine. I wasn't having any issues. Um, I then flew it around line of sight, but I noticed that it wasn't able to fly in angle mode for some reason. Um, even though I had set the switch up in beta flight, the accelerometer had never been calibrated from the factory. So when I went back in and asked to apply custom defaults, it actually wiped the entire configuration off the board. Um, I was really bummed out about it and they don't have the stock at least at the time of this video they don't have the stock um dump configuration for this quadcopter on the sub 250 website so i went ahead and requested from sub 250 to put that on their website so hopefully they'll they'll see this you know they'll see that email and maybe get it done if enough of us reach out to them but i was able to find a dump configuration from the oscar leong page and i'll put a link down to that in the video description as well 
Um, thank gosh for Oscar Leong posting that because if not, I don't know where I would have got the stock dump for this because it does have a custom pig tune, some things set up from the factory for this quadcopter. So I went ahead and I copied it and I did the, the paste dump in for this quadcopter and it kept flipping out and I couldn't figure out why it kept flipping out. Um, a couple times, uh, I did notice that one of the motors wasn't spinning the right direction, so I went ahead and fixed that. It still ended up flipping out, and I was getting really discouraged about it. I did reach out to Sub 250 and let them know about the issues I was having, and they did, um, they did want, they did reach out to me very, fairly quickly with a response email uh, asking me if I could please post a video of what experiences I was having. Um, so shout out to Sub 250 for you know getting back to me with that email pretty pretty you know quickly I think, and uh, I did purchase this with my own money so um, I didn't get this for review or anything like that. Um, so then finally I decided to check the board orientation a little bit further um, because I noticed if I move the quadcopter just a little bit, it appeared in Betaflight that the, it was moving correctly. But then I, I went in, back in and decided to move the board further forward and for, further backward and all sides. And that's when I noticed that the board orientation was off just the slightest bit. Enough to where it would make the quadcopter flip out. So, all I had to do was change the board orientation to the correct degree in the Betaflight configuration tab. And I got it to fly perfectly. Um, after that, I haven't had any issues. Everything's been working great. So, yeah, I had a little bit of hiccup stumbling for setup, but once I got it, um, I felt, you know, pretty confident. I wish the flight times were a little bit longer. I do have the high voltage packs. However, I've not been charging them to high voltage. So, I don't know if that's why I'm not getting, you know, the extended flight time that they advertise. But I did actually get, um, I got the batteries to come with the Sub-250 as well as I ordered GMB batteries from Amazon, and I'm having about the same results with either batteries. So at this point, I think that's all the flight time I'm gonna be able to get charging these packs to 4.2 volts um, per pack. And I mean, that's good enough for me, just you know, have extra packs so I can fly more. But you definitely wanna make sure you pick up some extra batteries with this. Um, and the way they fit in there, you know, you could get some skinnier, longer batteries in here. You don't have to get the, the batteries that come with it. I love that I'm able to take this small little drone that fits in the palm of your hand and fly this thing around in my house, outside of my house on 1S power, not have to worry about bothering anybody or it being too loud. And it's just a ton of fun. So we're getting into the, the, the fall winter season here. So definitely going to be flying this micro a lot. Um, I, I really have had a lot of fun with it. It has so much power that I'm not used to. And it can recover from acro trip, uh, acro um, tricks outside fairly well. Definitely better than a whooped version. So the fact that they removed the whoops, I really like. However, that does come with some downfalls. So when you hit walls and stuff with this, more than likely you are going to crash. And I could not get turtle mode to work for this particular quadcopter. I just don't think that the current motors that are on it are powerful enough to flip it back over. At least from my experiences. Um, and a combination of these bi-blade props. So, yeah, I just know that if you do hit something in the house, more than likely you're going to go down. I don't think you're going to tear up too much stuff in the house with these propellers, as they're kind of small and thin. So I don't really see these doing much damage. But um, overall, I mean, after all the crashes I've had with it, and I've crashed this thing a lot, the only thing that's happened from it is I've just nicked up these props a little bit. The camera is good on this one. So um, the only thing I was having was a couple of lines across the screen. And I think that might have something to do with the crossfire antenna possibly having a little bit of interference with the video transmitter, possibly. But other than that, I've been really happy um, with this quadcopter. The camera's good enough to see inside in low light, um, good enough to fly around your house. And I love flying it through the whoop gates and everything. It's just a ton of fun. So do I recommend this quadcopter? Yes, I do recommend this quadcopter. However, um, just keep in mind that you, you, you may run into some issues during setup. Hopefully everything that I posted down in the video description, uh, along with Oscar Leong's uh, page for setup for this, will help you to not have the same kind of issues that I was having when you go to get your quadcopter set up. I don't feel like this is going to be a problem for every one of these, um, just maybe some here and there. But overall, very happy with the product, very happy with the Sub 250 NanoFly. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Please, please like, share, subscribe. There's going to be more videos on the Sub 250 Nano 16, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. E-Drone, out.